get this webinar started. Welcome, everybody, um, to this uh, combined webinar uh, by Symmetry and uh, Accruent, and titled Within for On Operators uh, Intelligence for the Built Environment. Yeah, and thank you from me as well. Um, this this is uh, the agenda for um, for the, the webinar. Our topics can get into many, many words, believe me. Um, so first of all, we would like to introduce ourselves. Then in a minute, half minute, I, we, we actually really want to involve you guys. Uh, so you don't, you don't uh, sit there and only listen. You need to take uh, some stuff under consideration. We have some polls during this, uh, this webinar and, and um, it is um, anonymous, which means that we, we use the poll to measure tendencies and not uh, not your your uh, individual answers only tendencies um by the way the the webinar is recorded and uh, actually hope that that um, that uh, you're all fine with that okay rudy could you change uh, the slide please there rudy please Stay yeah. safe yourself. Um, so my, my name is Rudy Peters. Um, I am a product owner at Accruent, uh, responsible for uh, Meridian Server as part of the uh, Meridian product suite. Um, worked at, um, at Meridian uh, since 2000 in several roles as developer uh, with professional services and since about 10 years as a product owner. Yeah, and uh, my name is Pinneman. I am um, at Symmetry, Symmetry as a business owner of uh, accruing businesses. I, am, I have worked with Meridian ever since the first beta version uh, saw the daylight in 1998. So I have tried my part during all the years. It has been good years, I would say. So um, uh, we are actually looking really forward to, to show you some some very good stuff in this uh, this webinar. So, Rudy, yeah. But before we do this, I would like to fire off uh, the, the the first polls here because of course, yeah. The, yeah, because this this uh, webinar is about BIM, and and when we are talking about BIM, we also talk about BIM levels. So, what we would like to know from you guys is uh, which a BIM maturity level, do, do you feel that, that you belong to? So I will launch this and it will run for around 30 seconds or something. Please fill in one, two, three, four, five. Great, thank you. And actually also, we would like to know just a little bit about who are you guys? Not personal, but what 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 of these uh, groups do you belong to? Great, thank you. Quick answers, very nice. Um, okay, um, we will start up here. And, and first of all, um, probably, probably uh, some of you know Meridian as, uh, as a system and, and some of you don't. Uh, so I thought I would, I would take uh, a few minutes to just talk you through um, what Meridian is, uh, what kind of system is Meridian? In, in basic, it, it, it is a workflow-based uh, enterprise managed document, document management system. And um, it, it uh, works through 
um, the web uh, client, the web, uh, uh, what can you see, the protocol. And what we see here is uh, the Meridian Power Web Client, which, which is uh, the client that, that um, controls uh, all your data. It's, it's, uh, it's quite easy built. Uh, in a way, so you you recognize um, the folder structure and and you recognize uh, in this case AutoCAD drawings, but we we do we do manage a whole range of of uh, different document uh, or file types uh, turned into document types, and and uh, uh, every document type has some some pages where all the uh, the, the data and the metadata is. Um, is stored by the docu document. Uh, Rudy, could you push the general pane, please, just for a short one? Ah, yeah, but no, we're not in the client. It's a PowerPoint. Sorry. Um, well, but it is it is very easy and and uh, it controls um, your workflow. It controls your revision. I can quickly show it. <laughs> um, yeah, we 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 will look at it later. Yeah, there you are. Yeah, it will come back in the presentation later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and um, what what it does also is uh, it it uh, connects and uh, integrates into several um, other systems, uh, especially asset management systems like Maximo or SAP or Accruent's own uh, maintenance connection. Uh, and um, if if we uh, if we uh, uh, think the thought of of uh, having a facility breakdown structure coming from uh, from a Revit model uh, turned into a maintenance connection. Then then we are about to head off what we're going to uh, to to talk about today. But then again, if if uh, you wonder what is Meridian, well, it fits into companies who want more control over their documentation. It is really a control system. This. And it fits if you 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 have more than one type of documentation. You can you can manage uh, AutoCAD, Revit, uh, or the mechanical uh, 3D uh, software like like uh, SolidWorks Inventor. It fits if you want to integrate with asset management. It fits if you want project control. It fits if you want to exchange data. And last but not least, if you want to sleep well at night, it is a very fit. So, okay. Thank you, Rudy. Could you change, please? Yeah. Who would not want to sleep by at night? No, you're, uh, uh, not not in not in these times. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, getting into the the next part of the um, uh, of the presentation, uh, BIM or building information management modeling, whatever you like for facility management, um, how we can make it work in a practical way. Uh, agenda of this part of the, um, uh, of the webinar is um, we will talk a bit about the, uh, the BIM life cycle, um, what the position of uh, accruent uh, is in that BIM life cycle, uh, about maturity levels and the phasing of uh, a BIM implementation in an organization. Um, then we get into building the facility breakdown structure. So that's what FDS stands for throughout this uh, presentation by gathering data and consolidating uh, all the data into a single consistent facility breakdown structure. Um, we will look at what Meridian can do in, in operations, uh, supporting work orders. Um, then we take a look at managing deliverables, how we can define the information that we need uh, for, uh, for operations and how we can check that information. Um, and the last part will be <coughs> sorry, um, taking a look at project collaboration um, by um, uh, talking a bit about BIM 360 uh, integration. So directing in the, uh, the BIM uh, or ALIM, uh, which stands for Asset Lifecycle Information Management Lifecycle. Yeah, but, but uh, so a number of uh, phases in that life cycle. So. Yeah, yeah, but, but here, here we actually also want an opinion uh, for for, uh, for the audience. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, I yeah. went too fast. 
No, no, no problem. So, so what what we really would like to know is that do do you actually have a, a 3D digital representation of of uh, your your uh, of your facilities? Um, and uh, we there are some s s few stuff we like to know. I will launch. This is actually cool because 80% of you guys already have um, a 3D model of your facilities. So, so this webinar will really give you some thoughts, I think. So, please, Rudy. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, looking at yes, the life cycle, then um, we we divide that in um, mm -hmm. in five phases. Uh, starting with preparing the construction of a facility or uh, a project to, uh, to upgrade or maintain the facility, designing and collaborating, uh, uh, designing and collaborating in the um, uh, in the project. So, and as we saw from the from the poll, indeed, uh, 3D design tools are more and more used in this uh, in this phase. Um, from such a um, uh, model, uh, such a BIM model used in design, uh, we can export information, we can uh, export um, uh, flat 2D drawings, which can be used later in maintenance and operations, also exporting the data from um, such a BIM model. Uh, then we can, in the review and approve phase, we can extract from that information um, for the data, actually, more meaningful information. So, building a facility breakdown structure, um, relating uh, documents to the uh, uh, different elements in the facility breakdown structure, what we call the tag doc relation, uh, with the tag being uh, a reference to the, the, the tag plates, the tag number plates you find on many pieces of equipment. Uh, also, equipment lists and uh, and data, so actually ma making meaningful information from the data that we extract from the design information. Then that is, that meaningful information we can uh, validate and uh, and prove, um, and then this information can become available for um, the. Uh, facility management um, phase of the uh, life cycle, operating and maintaining your facility. So there we will see all the approved data, the facility breakdown structure, the documents, the lists uh, to be used by the operators and the maintenance engineers. Um, these operators and maintenance engineers, they will be um, uh, making comments, making markups on the um, uh, on the different uh, documents and um, uh, and items of data. Uh, so as they are uh, maintaining the facility, making changes to it, or they have comments about how the facility works or what can be improved, these comments and markups then can be used uh, to prepare for a next cycle. Um, so improvements in the uh, in the facility, which then again go into the design and collaborate uh, stage, etc. So um, the center of this life cycle, what we see is what we call the, uh, the digital uh, facility. Um, so all the data um, required to um, uh, to run the facility, maintain the facility. Um, available in digital format and available to all the stakeholders in the different phases of the asset life cycle. So that is the, the, the vision of Accruent to, um, um, to realize that and the, the role of Meridian within the total um, uh, product uh, portfolio of, uh, of Accruent um, is collecting uh, this data, uh, the review and approval uh, cycle and the handover, 
and then also making the engineering data available, uh, specific, sorry, specifically the um, engineering drawings and the 3D models uh, to the maintenance engineers in the operate and maintain phase. Um, the data that, um, that we need and that we get from the uh, engineering um, and construction projects they can come in a lot of different uh, formats. So 3D models, uh, so widely used um, within this audience. Um, a remark to be made there is that in order to be useful for operations and maintenance, the level of detail needs to be fairly high in the model, so LOD 400 or uh, plus or more, uh, because we need to know the precise make of all the uh, uh, the pieces of equipment and the precise measurements of, uh, of all the rooms and other elements in the facility. Um, we can also get data from, uh, from schedules, so basically reports on um, asset information uh, by, uh, uh, by the different assets. Um, these can be derived from the model, for instance Revit has um, extensive facilities to create such uh, schedules uh, they all can also come from another uh, source, like for instance, the purchasing uh, system at the, uh, the contractor that produces a list of this information. So this is also something that we'll see. And if we um, uh, get schedule information, that will usually be in the form of Excel spreadsheets. Uh, 2D drawings. Uh, the 2D drawings can be derived from the, um, uh, the 3D model. Um, in case of um, an older facility where no 3D model is available. Um, there can also be 2D drawings like AutoCAD and MicroStation drawings. And if you have the originals of those drawings, actually there can be a lot of data um, in them. So the drawings are built up of um, uh, what is called blocks, um, for instance, representing a, a room or a piece of furniture uh, in a room. And on that block in the drawing, uh, additional information can often be found. So even if you don't have a 3D model of your facility, uh, but only 2D drawing, still things can be done. Uh, BIM 360 can of course be a uh, data source. So if the model is shared and collaborated on in a BIM 360 project, um, that can also be used as a source for asset data. Um, spreadsheets um, also still used uh, often certain in the in the case of, uh, of older facilities. Um, there um, we see two variants that can be structured spreadsheets, uh, a bit like a schedule. Uh, so everything in the in the spreadsheet is well defined, so we know exactly what data we're talking about. They can also be ad hoc spreadsheets. Um, uh, created by someone for a particular task uh, within the construction project, but still can contain useful information for the operator maintain phase. If you have pieces of equipment, like um, uh, for instance an, uh, an air conditioner, um, there will be data sheets from the, uh, from the vendor. There's a lot of useful information in these uh, data sheets, like maximum temperatures, um, the, um, uh, what you need for um, uh, to maintain uh, the equipment, uh, um, um, advice settings, etc. Unfortunately, um, extracting the data from these data sheets is laborious, um, and uh, there are no, let's say, really good solutions for that. Uh, and that is because the data sheets all uh, have their vendor-specific format, uh, and in order to extract the data that you need. Someone who understands the data, who understands the data sheet, needs to read through it and get the data or type, type the data over from the data sheet. Um, also, manuals. Um, we also need those reports for maintenance and, uh, and operations there. Uh, the same thing, the, uh, the extraction of the data is laborious. Um, one of the things that Meridian can do is simply making these manu manuals available to the people who need them in the maintenance organization. Um, then we have a lot of data, but you also see a lot of processes, facility management processes. 
um, where asset data is required. Um, so here's a list of them. Probably this is not a complete list. Uh, but just going through one of the a few of the major uh, processes here. So tracking warranty. Um, if you have warranty on, uh, for instance, on the roof uh, or uh, an air conditioning, and there's a leak or it breaks down, then it um, uh, it is useful to to know that the uh, the system is under warranty and whom you can reach out to to um, address the, uh, the the problems with it. Uh, ensuring compliance, actually we see compliance becoming more and more imp important um, uh, nowadays. For instance, making sure that fire regulations uh, are met, that uh, fire extinguishers are in places where they uh, where they should be, uh, smoke detectors, uh, etc., um, to make sure that the um, uh, the safety of the uh, the facility is in accordance with the local regulations and laws. Um, preparing preventive maintenance. Um, so many pieces of equipment, uh, air conditioners, and for instance also the smoke alarms, they need inspections, they need preventive maintenance, and um, in order to run the facility efficiently and safely, we need to create these uh, preventive maintenance uh, work orders ahead of time, and for that we need to know um, what is the maintenance schedule of a air conditioner and how often should a smoke alarm be um, uh, be uh, inspected uh, and how should that exactly be done. So it's all asset data that we need there. We need to know all the smoke alarms that are there uh, so that we can create the work orders for them. Then the execution of the work order. Um, in order to, uh, to do that, um, let's again take that example of that smoke alarm, then the uh, engineer executing the, uh, the work order uh, needs to know where the piece of equipment is, uh, needs to know how the um, uh, inspection should be carried out for that particular make of that smoke alarm. Uh, budget preparation, so uh, preparing the, uh, the maintenance uh, budget for next year or preparing the budget for a uh, refurbishment uh, project. Uh, requires a lot of data uh, to go into that. We, we need to know all the pieces of equipment that require maintenance, what their state is, and what maintenance activities are needed in the next budget period. Um, project selection, uh, also an interesting one. So, for instance, you have a, uh, a budget that you can spend on improving the energy efficiency of your building. Um, and then uh, you are uh, presented with the question, well, what, what should we do? Should we insulate all the roofs or should we replace all the windows with, uh, with double glazing? Uh, and in order to make that decision, um, um, you need to, to weigh the, um, the expected benefits, uh, savings uh, of, that, uh, of that change against the uh, the cost of it. So you would need to know how much roof there is to be insulated, um, what the insulation level is at the moment, um, what the uh, the amount of um, uh, of heat uh, of heating that can be uh, saved if all these um, uh, roofs were uh, upgraded to a particular insulation level versus uh, how many uh, windows are there, how many need to be replaced to make everything double glazed, and what would be the savings of that. And then with all that information, you can make an informed decision about how to, you, know, how you can best spend your, your budget for that, uh, that energy improvement. Um, and all kinds of ad hoc queries, uh, which often need to be uh, answered quickly, uh, because the board needs this information. Um, a, Obvious example in uh, in this period of COVID is questions of, uh, around the maximal maximum occupancy of your facility. So how many um, how many people can you can you admit to your facility? Or uh, how many pupils can be in the classroom, uh, etc. Given the new restrictions that we are facing in this COVID crisis. Yeah. So lots of um, what? No, please. Yeah. I'm on, only interfering um, because so I, I have nothing I want to know. 
Okay. I, I want to I want to to know uh, from the audience in, in which processes um, this data could be in, in, uh, important for for uh, for your organization, please. So I would just allow to Paul. Um, if you don't have anything further to to add, Rudy. Okay, go ahead. I take I do it. There you go. We're not allowed to vote, Rudy. Mm -hmm. And you left out the ad hoc queries. Yeah, but there was not room for more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. I will close the poll again. It, it was actually, uh, most of you uh, were uh, using the data uh, or has important data in in the preparing the prevented maintenance. Um, the other okay. one was was divided equally. So, thank you for that, Woody. It's all yours. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, the preventative maintenance and work order work order execution are ones that we we hear more often. Excellent. But indeed, an interesting outcome: preventative maintenance. Um, so how we can take steps towards uh, what we call asset data government. So um, to make sure that all the data that we need for all these processes is available and, and is validated. So again, we have all these different sources of, um, uh, of data. Um, there can be gaps between, there can also be overlaps. Uh, it can also be that uh, the data in these data sources contradicts each other. So that, for instance, uh, for the, uh, the total, um, uh, or, or let's make a better example. So for the, uh, the floor finish of a particular room, you find one value in the, uh, the BIM model and another one in a, uh, a list schedule that you got as an Excel spreadsheet. So that needs to be reconciled. Um, and then um, summarize into one consistent data set uh, for the entire facility. And then if we use that data in all the different processes that we, uh, that we talked about, um, we also see a, an overlap in the requirements for, um, uh, for the data. Uh, within uh, among these different processes, so for instance, between preventive maintenance and work order execution, there will obviously be a large, be a large overlap in the data that is needed there. Um, so we need to make sure that uh, the, the data that we feed into these processes comes from one uh, consistent source, so there are no contradictions between uh, between the different processes. So that you, you plan a particular cost for the work order during preventive maintenance and then during the work order execution, the cost turns out to be different because the, uh, the data in the two systems turned out to be inconsistent. So a, a single consolidated consistent uh, data set, that is what uh, data, government, data governance um, aims at producing. Um, so we see that in, um, in several steps, um, data discovery, data definition, data validation, and data governance going through these, uh, these different steps. So beginning with um, understanding what data is available. So what is there in the 3D model? What is there in the drawings? What is there in the different documents uh, that you have received from, uh, from the project? Then defining the data. So what is what is needed for these facility management uh, processes? Validating the data, is it correct? So certain data uh, obviously is required, um, like um, in an example that we see the area of each room. Um, it can also be that um, the, there are restrictions to the value that the data can take. Um, we also see that in an example later on that um, using a particular classification for all the spaces in, in your facility, you can select a particular um, classification system to, uh, to do that, like for instance, Omniclass, 
And if that is the case, you would like to have all the classifications that you get from the input uh, sources um, to be of the Omni-class uh, classification system. And then finally, data governance. So is it fit for purpose? Um, we don't want to collect data just because we can. We want to do that for a particular purpose. We want to make sure that those purposes are indeed served by the data that we uh, that we gather. So that, for instance, preventive maintenance is being planned um, precisely and accurately. Um, you could say that you do first do data definition and then data discovery. Um, we still put data discovery first in this uh, in this list because we often see that uh, organizations don't have a full um, a full picture of all the data uh, which they um, uh, which they have uh, in the different data sources. Um, so first discovering what you what you have um, and uh, then start uh, defining it allows you to build on what you have instead of having to start hunting for all kinds of data that's currently not available. Um, these uh, four steps are obviously not just a linear process. There will be feedback loops. So uh, if you, for instance, find that you say, I need a particular, um, uh, particular data, but the data is simply not available, maybe we need to look at an alternative uh, there. Uh, it can also be that um, once we have defined our data, so then we say we need particular data for um, a facility management process, like the condition of, um, uh, of an asset, uh, that we do not have the data, we will discover it, so then we need to start looking for additional data to cover that need. And also data governance can feed back into data definition, so if we see that a process is not served well by the data that is being uh, being collected we need to redefine what we collect so that that process can run efficiently um, we also um, um, suggest um, not to to do this all at once for all these um, uh, facility management processes that are out there um, because that, that could take years to uh, to find and define and validate all the all the data. Um, a better approach would be to take one particular goal, like for instance um, preparing the uh, the preventive maintenance uh, work orders, then to go through all this process until that process uh, to all these steps until that process is um, uh, works efficiently. And then pick up the next process, like for instance, budget preparation. Uh, again, go through these steps. And the more processes that you have um, have gone through, the easier the, it will become because a lot of the data uh, will be overlapping and will already be there. So I think we have another poll here, Karen. Yes, yes, we do. Because we, what we lo would like to know is, do, do you actually know uh, what kind of asset data you you really have? So, so. Uh... I'll just launch it now. I have a feeling about the answer of this, but let, let us see. Okay, I will uh, close the poll. The result was that, well, um, a lot of you uh, knew some of it. Uh, some of you knew about 50-50 and, and a third of you, yes, in general, uh, you, you had a feeling. So um, this was the results of, uh, of, of, of this poll. So, okay, Rudy. Okay, so a lot of data out there that so a lot of data out there that could potentially be put to good use. Yes, you could say so. Okay. Um, then taking a look at uh, at rollout phasing. So if you think uh, of the, uh, the four steps again, uh, data discovery, definition, validation, and governance. Then the discovery of the data um, obviously 
we will start with the deliverables, that the data deliverables that we get from the, uh, the construction project, um, extracting the facility breakdown data and building that consolidated FBS and, uh, and inspecting it. Uh, data uh, definition um, that will come from the, uh, the data requirements from the different um, uh, asset management facility management processes um, with a central uh, asset information registry uh, as we uh, as we described uh, linking the maintenance management system and other systems that uh, that you need uh, for facility management to so 3D view to that asset info. Uh, a status reports uh, about the uh, the different assets, so that will define the data that needs to go in to those processes. Um, with that, we can start uh, validating uh, that uh, that data. So, uh, for instance, if the requirement in the CMS is that every space should be classified or every um, asset should be classified with the uh, the Omni class classification that we then can inspect that the data that we get indeed is from the other class classification. Um, so evaluating those uh, deliverables to make sure that they will serve the asset management processes later on. Um, at, at this point, we can start uh, thinking about data governance, so how this, this all fits together and how we can make sure that the, um, the, the needs um, of the facility management process are, processes are continually being met by the data that we get from the different projects that we do. And with that data governance in place, um, we can um, optimize further by becoming uh, proactive on the um, formulating the data requirements. Um, so knowing what data um, we need, uh, knowing what, uh, what generally will be um, delivered by contract and we can start defining the data that we require at the end of the project so that the, uh, the stakeholders of the project know that up front. Um, also becoming um, a, a participant in the engineering project uh, earlier on by um, inspecting uh, early versions, for instance, of the 3D model. Uh, to see what data is there and also to uh, indicate any uh, deficiencies in that data so that uh, within the project there's more time to, um, to collect the data and fill those gaps. Um, and then uh, in the end you might see the, um, um, the holy grail is actually doing sign-off, uh, formal sign-off um, on the data um, uh, based on the uh, on the requirements that we have. Um, so, looking at all this uh, information that we need to process and the, the, the process in which we do it, here are a number that we will look into it in the, in the next of the uh, the presentation. Um, so, getting data from the CD model, uh, BIM 360. Um, work order uh, management and the, uh, uh, the budget preparation. I get uh, a note from Per to speed up. So how much time have, do we have left in the, uh, the webinar, uh, Per? Are you there, Per? Yes, sorry. Uh, 20, 25, mm -hmm. 20, 25 minutes. Uh, so, so okay, we just speed up a bit. Yeah. While while you are calculating what to say, I will take this one, because when, when you are building yeah. up the the facility breakdown structure, um, you 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 will have some pains because some of the data will be locked up in in um, in, in file types or document types or models. That you that you uh, pr probably or perhaps do not have access to, and if you have the access, it will be uh, di quite difficult to to uh, to find what you need. Uh, probably um, you don't know what data is is in the models, and and um, if the data has been distributed across a, a lot of different models, you 
you wouldn't you yeah perhaps you will find it but you will have uh, have to spend a lot of time doing that uh, because either they are per discipline or per section or, or whatever so before before we go ahead I just have a very small uh, poll here just to know what type uh, type of files uh, do you receive from from your contractors Okay, and close it again. Um, actually, half of you are receiving uh, AutoCAD or MicroStation drawings. Um, another, th another third is um, uh, receiving uh, IFC files, and, and uh, the rest of you receives uh, Revit files. So it's quite fine. We have something to, to, uh, to go ahead with. Brody, could you yeah. push? Okay. Yes. Well, so, um, what? Yeah, well, farewell. What is? You first. Yeah, what what is what is the possibilities today? Mm. Yeah, well, we can we can publish Revit into a, an IFC file. We can in Meridian import the IFC file uh, as a customization, right? But but it is working quite well. Uh, and in in the import of the IF, IFC file, we will have the facility breakdown uh, uh, structure uh, directly in Meridian. We're going to see that in a minute. Um, and then. Um, uh, you will have uh, the possibility to merge uh, IFC files uh, with uh, with uh, fr from from uh, different uh, different vendors, uh, different uh, di different verticals, uh, constructions, uh, architects, uh, uh, ventilation, and so on. And and also we have that uh, on on the roadmap roadmap side. Really, please. Yeah. Yeah, so um, uh, we are uh, we're actively uh, pursuing this uh, uh, this topic within the crew, and um, one of the things that we are doing there is it's a bit of a technical term, the content processing framework that is a um, a facility that we are building uh, in uh, in cloud, um, which can process uh, all kinds of content. In this case, file content. So, for instance, those Revit models and ISC files and extract. The asset data from them. Um, also, um, also in the cloud, working on the asset API, um, which then will allow you to leverage that data in your facility management processes. Um, if you then take a look at um, how it works today in uh, in Meridian, so this is about the IFC file. Um, so this is a piece of customization. Uh, if you have a nice IFC file, uh, here you see the Meridian user interface again. We can import that, uh, that data. Uh, it will then be uh, represented in, uh, in Meridian as, an, uh, as a so-called assembly. And we can map the information that we get to Meridian properties so that it becomes searchable. And then I would like to show that so to see that um, uh, there's something practical going on here so here we have such an IFC file it's a bridge and if i take a look at the model this is what it looks like so this is a bridge it's fairly simple so the uh, the, the demo can be done quickly uh, so all the information here is in uh, in this IFC file and then what we can do uh, is we can import the data And that will take then a little bit of time. And then when that uh, has happened, then here in the facilities, we see that um, a complete structure has been added to Meridian. And if I um, select the main node of that, then I can look at what's called the assembly structure. And then here we see the entire structure of the, uh, uh, of the bridge. 
uh, with all the uh, the elements that were imported and uh, in this case what kind of uh, uh, class they are. So all the data of um, the, uh, the facility data structure inside the IC file is now available as a hierarchical structure inside Meridian. Uh, then uh, merging the facility data structures. So uh, sometimes you have the situation that you get multiple models and then elements are not called the same in this model. So here uh, we have an example of a, uh, a clinic in the architectural model. The first floor is called first floor. And then in the electrical model, the first floor is called uh, level one. And then what we can do here is basically synchronizing the names so that they can match, they match. And then we can uh, select what is the source and what is the target. So in which of the hierarchies do we want to summarize uh, everything. Uh, and then we can call a tool that will then um, merge all the data and also detect any conflicts in the data so that you can, uh, you can address those and harmonize everything. So in the interest of time, I will skip this demo. <coughs> and then Pierre, we can talk about the outcome. Pierre, are you muted? Sorry. Otherwise, I, I will take I, this I, part. I, 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 I never get used to, to unmute myself. I, I only do it for politeness. <laughs> no, no. Uh, well, what we saw was that the, the facility breakdown structure uh, items, they were extracted from, from the IOC file directly into the region. All the data from there, uh, they are visible and, and uh, we can map selected data from, from this uh, breakdown structure into Meridian properties so we can uh, manipulate a bit with them in, in, inside Meridian as well. Um, please change. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, on to the next topic, uh, supporting uh, work orders, uh, which need this asset information. Um, so pain there is that the, um, um, the maintenance engineer cannot understand the asset ge ge geometry when preparing the work order, so it needs to know where is this piece of equipment and what does it look like. And the relevant documentation is not available, like for instance, the standard operating procedure or the, the manual, how the piece of equipment should be maintained. Yeah. So today we have a Meridian Explorer. Go oh, ahead, uh, there. Yeah, yeah, no, take it. Yeah, well, we have the Explorer to do so. Um, uh, Explorer is, is a, a kind of read-only web interface where uh, to, to show data from uh, uh, from the region and can be used as an independent tool, an independent, independent interface, actually, but also also an interface uh, to to, uh, to combine the asset management systems into uh, into the Meridian system. So so it's a very useful tool. Uh, or a client, and and we also do have hot spotting from the 2D drawings, meaning that if you if you select um, a pump uh, in a 2D drawing in the viewer, you can actually uh, look at all the data uh, combined to this pump uh, directly directly in uh, in the drawing. Um, also, we have uh, several uh, customized solutions for for uh, using Explorer, and Rudy is going to. To show you some some uh, some mockups in in in, in the roadmap right now. Yeah. So my dear, yeah. And um, one more quick remark about the hotspotting. So um, we are able to generate those hotspots based on the the block information that we find in the drawing. So um, if the drawings are fairly well structured, you don't need to uh, to add all those hotspots manually, but we can get them automatically. So things that we're working on in the, uh, in the roadmap is um, to move from, uh, from 2D to 3D, uh, basically. Um, so if you have a 3D view of, uh, of the facility, 
that you can uh, point at anything you see in a 3D view and, and with that open the Meridian Explorer. And the Meridian Explorer can then show background information and documentation about the object that you have selected. Um, also the other way around, so viewing um, an asset in Forge, which is a 3D viewer, um, the user selects a piece of assets that he needs to maintain, so that comes from the work order, um, integrated with the maintenance management system, and then can immediately jump to uh, the location uh, of that, uh, that asset in the 3D view. So here are some, uh, some concepts of how that works. So here we see a screen of, in this case, Maximo as the maintenance management system. And there we added a button, which you see on the left, view asset information. And that will then launch the Meridian Explorer, where we can see more information about the, uh, the asset, in this case, a cabinet that we, uh, that we have selected, and also see uh, here we see a 2D drawing. So this is functionality that is already available with, uh, with Meridian that you can directly jump from your work or in your maintenance management system to the uh, engineering information that the maintenance engineer needs. And then what, um, what we are working on is then uh, opening this in, uh, in the Forge viewer and that there then the user can see here is the cabinet uh, inside the facility so that's where I need to go uh, in order to, um, to do my maintenance and also can see how it is uh, hooked up to, uh, to other pieces of the electrical circuit in the, in the facility. Yeah, so. Go back to you, Per. Yes, so um, when doing this, we will have a lot better understanding of, uh, of the asset contest context so when when you pre prepare a work order you, you will uh, be able to combine it uh, with, uh, with with documents from uh, from Meridian actually Meridian already know the the, the combination of, of the tax from the asset management asset management system and the documents um, and that that connection secures you that you will have all the re relevant documentation available uh, directly from the asset management system and what does it gain well it gives you less less costs uh, less time costs less time con consuming uh, to uh, to going forth and back between uh, between the document management system and uh, um, and uh, the asset system to to secure all uh, all the connections but but um, Actually, believe me, I, I have I have set up a couple of these systems, and and it it, it is really beneficial for the users. Um, I do have a poll here because what we would like to know is how how automated are you actually in your companies? Okay, thank you for answering. Um, around 40% of you have uh, do not have any automation, but are planning to do so. 25% is yes, it works perfectly fine, very nicely. Uh, and uh, another close to 40% said no, no, and we don't have any plans of any automation. So thank you for your answers, and we will continue, Rudy. Okay. Um, so next uh, uh, next topic: uh, managing uh, deliverables. So defining and checking the information. Um, as an example, um, we have something called plain language questions. So uh, questions in in a normal language um, about something that we need to know for, about our facility. So an example here: How much do we need to budget for cleaning? But if you want to answer that question, we need a lot of information. We all kinds of things need cleaning, furniture, floors, and windows, etc. 
if we take floors, for instance, then I need to know what are all my accessible spaces in my facility, what's the area of each one, what's their purpose, because that determines how clean I need to keep them, what's on the floor, the type of floor coverage, what does the supplier say uh, of the, uh, the floor cladding, uh, what are the standards and regulations that I need to adhere to, so a lot of information in order to answer this uh, seemingly simple question. So we're looking at lists, uh, all those spaces that we need to keep clean. Uh, we're looking at data uh, uh, about these, uh, these spaces, and we're also looking at documentation that, um, uh, that uh, tells us uh, to what extent we should keep everything clean. Um, so that will then, uh, gathering the data, processing the data will then uh, allow us to answer questions like how much is going to cost to do a carpet deep clean of floor one, how much hours it will take, uh, etc. How many materials do we need uh, cleaning agents in order to uh, to achieve that? Um, so pains here is uh, we need to define the calculation of those required quantities, um, and that is something that we will address. We also have a poll before we get into that. Yes, and and uh, what we would like to know is. Um, do you calculate these quantities and, and uh, how do you actually do it? Okay, thank you for the answers. Um, a third of you take the data directly from the model data. Quite nice. A uh, third of you ask, well, we ask the contractor to make the calculation. Very good. Um, and the rest is split between, we do it manually by entering all data and also we do not, and uh, that is a problem. So thank you for this and we can- Okay. Continue, Rudy. Thank you. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. actually, I will do it uh, because today we can we can manage uh, the plain language questions like how much does it cost to clean floor one in in this building. Uh, we can manage the schedules, uh, the workflow, and the relations uh, to the plain language questions and the, the facility breakdown uh, structure items um, that we can do, and we can also. Um, uh, manage the data from, from the checklists. But um, there's a roadmap regarding this as well, Rudy. So, yeah, so um, um, again, this content processing framework, which I mentioned earlier, and um, so um, processing the um, uh, what's inside the, the, the BIM models to calculate these quantities according to particular. Um, uh, calculation rules. Um, another big topic on the roadmap is deliverables management. Um, so managing all the deliverables and also making sure that the deliverables are delivered in time according to the phases of a project. Um, so let's take a look at um, uh, plain language questions. And here I will quickly go to the Power Web interface again, uh, go to another project where we um, prepared some samples. So here we have a plain language question, um, which is the cleaning cost uh, estimate. We can say when it is required relative to the uh, a project uh, phase. Uh, a plain language question needs a particular input uh, in order to answer it completely. And here we can make an overview of the, uh, the status. Uh, of that uh, uh, um, uh, plain language question. So we see we need an architectural model. Uh, we need a schedule to do the calculation. And uh, Americal is uh, a carpet cleaner. Uh, direction of usage, we see that has been delivered. Uh, we see that the, um, uh, the schedule is, uh, is uh, due shortly. So we need to take a look at that. Uh, the architectural model is, uh, is still on time. 
Um, you also see here uh, suitability. So this is according to the uh, PES 1192, now ISO 19650 BIM standard, uh, to um, 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 classify each deliverable into a particular suitability. So this one is a build, that's fine. Uh, this is for internal review and comments, so we still need to work on, uh, on that. Um, I'll immediately go to this uh, schedule to uh, talk a bit about that part. Um, so we see this is uh, still being worked on. Uh, so the structure is also according to that uh, PES 1192 uh, 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 ISO 19650 standards. And here we can take a look at how actually does that work. Um, building up such a calculation. So here we have a list, and in this case that is uh, all the, uh, the spaces on floor one. So I can define a query that uh, gets all these uh, all these spaces, and then I can say I want to calculate cleaning cost. So I want to add a data field I get from my BIM model. I need the area. If I could type. Um, so here, GSA BIM area, we can add that to the list. So here we see the areas of the, uh, I'll just also give it a name, but it's maybe easier. Um, here we see the, uh, the areas. Uh, then I also need to know what kind of spaces are we, because these, because that will determine how clean we need to keep them. Um, so here we can look at a, um, what was it? Classification, description. Also use that as the header. So that allows me, uh, sorry, I need to have the category description. By the way, something that we're not showing now, but is also possible to um, um, uh, to um, um, to find what is no, that's not good. Uh, to find what data is created, let's say in the BIM model, so that we know what is useful for different schedules. So here we see the different uh, category descriptions, uh, and then what we can do that we say well according to regulations, depending on what the um, the the space is used for. For instance, a healing space or a corridor, um, we need a particular level of hygiene to be maintained. And for that, we can add a lookup. Here we have the hygiene. And that hygiene depends on um, what is in column C, the category description. So update that. And here we see the different hygiene levels. And the way that you can determine that, if I go to the settings here, so here's that lookup list. Then here you see, um, here we can uh, we can add for each type of uh, of room what the level of hygiene is that is required. So that's where that information comes from. Um, so here then we can make that calculation, um, and then in the end we can uh, calculate what would be the effort of the or the or the cost, and the effort would then be what is the area. So that's column B multiplied by the hygiene level. And that is column D. Yes. And then here we have a calculation of the effort and we can take a look at totals and we can take a look at maximum values. We can see that all items have a value, so it's completely calculated. So here we now have one of these quantities um calculated uh, in a in a repeatable way because it all it's all done in the system based on these definitions so that is what these slides are about yeah and, and then we can take a look at the outcome again yeah yes uh you could say uh, the outcome of this is that we do have the, the quantity it, it's really amazing what you can get out of of a revit or a, or an ifc model right um you can get the quantities uh, defined you can do the relations uh, uh with the with the with the plq uh, and and you can 
um, calcul calculates uh, a lot of different results, uh, areas, costs, and and uh, and uh, things like that. In uh, directly inside Norwegian, you don't need you don't need uh, an extra calculation system to do so. So you will have the results uh, ready to use uh, right away. Actually, um, now I I'm a curious guy, so I would I would like to to know how many how many plants, facilities, locations uh, do we actually manage? Okay, thank you for that. Um, it was actually a range, uh, wide range between uh, plant assets up to plus 100. So um, most of you uh, had one, but the rest was uh, spread right over. Thank you. Okay, Rudy. And of course, the bigger your facilities uh, or the more of them, the more you will be interested in repeatability. Yep. Um, well, in in the checklist, uh, you have paint. Um, you have no visit. Perhaps you have no visibility of, of uh, the completeness of of, uh, of data at all. And uh, I am pretty sure that Rudy is going to to show you something about that. Yeah. Because today we. Yeah. Received, so yeah, you take it, please. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, and what we can do today is we can retrieve the imported asset data. So we've already seen that. Then defining those data requirements and so report the completeness. Um, and um, these kinds of cal quantity calculation report of the completeness is also something that we have in the roadmap in process and all this content. So here again, I will go to the, uh, the interface, so here, uh, so these are, for instance, this is the information that we need in order to complete the schedule, the area, the description, etc. So what we can do, and this is fairly recent uh, uh, development, so uh, to do a bit more, um, a bit more uh, uh, work on integrating it with, uh, uh, with the other features, but what we can do at the moment, um, here again, we have a um, a list of um, um, of items. In this case, they are all the items on the third floor um, of this uh, this particular facility. And we take a look at the category code, category description, the BIM area. Uh, so that's information that we need for our schedule. And then what you often see is that there's a lot of information in the in the model that actually don't need. Uh, so here, for instance, we see there's also some gypsum board, and actually I don't need to calculate the cleaning cost of that. That's just something I can filter out. You see that I already filtered out the walls because of a lot of, uh, lot of wall uh, elements in this, uh, in this model. I also don't need the board, so I'll just filter that out. And now I see I only have uh, these, um, um, these items um, there. Uh, I see some uh, warnings. So here, uh, this value is set to be mandatory. So that is something that I can say here. It is mandatory, or it needs to be from a particular lookup. This value, is, uh, sorry, this value is mandatory and it's empty. So that's all good. Here we see a category code, and there we say the value, value is invalid. And um, this again has to do with these lookup lists. And if I go to the lookup list that is um, uh, category, um, um, uh, configured to check the category codes as in this space. And then in order to make that, uh, that error, what I did is that in these uh, classifications, I made one deliberate error. That should not be an X. That simply should be this number. And then if we return to the checklist, then we see that these are not flagged anymore. So here I can check that my category code comes from a particular categorization uh, system. 
It can be that for some reason a particular object doesn't have this data but also doesn't need it, uh, like for instance this one, then I can also simply exclude it from the list so that I won't get the report anymore on the fact that that, is, uh, uh, that doesn't have the data. Then the remaining issues, um, and in uh, interest of time, I'll skip the details of that, the remaining issues can then be uh, reported, and that report can be sent out to the contractor to correct the deficiencies. So I'll quickly go to the backup slides. Yeah, and... And then the outcome is that's correct right there. Yeah, yeah, but the outcome is obvious, because we have automated almost everything here. Uh, the calculations of the quantities are automated, the completeness is now known, and the status of, of the PLQ, the, the plain language questions, uh, is also known, so it's just uh, actually to go ahead. Okay, Rudy. Okay. The last little bit, um, Bing 360 integration. Yeah, um, actually, before we continue here, I, I would like to know, do you act, do you use BIM 360, please? Okay, thank you for this. Um, some of you have your own environments. Some of you uh, use a project contractor environment in BIM 360. A third of you would do not have it, but would like to. And and 40% uh, is no, we don't. We don't need to use the BIM 360. Anyway, if you do, you will have uh, mm -hmm. you will have a time pressure. Uh, uh, to, to hand uh, when you're going to hand over to to the operation and uh, operation and maintenance um, because you need to collect all the data you need to secure that all the data are valid um, you do not necessarily have the visibility of all the data and uh, if you have they might be uh, incomplete when you hand over and then you need to uh, to rephrase again and look again and um, and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, time spending, time consuming, consuming uh, doing this. Uh, so so uh, for for you who uh, who have uh, uh, or uses the BIM 360 environment, uh, and who are actually managed manage this uh, this environment for you so i'll just uh, fire off i think that will that will be the last of the polls Great, thank you for that. Um, one third is, is telling it is the only operator and, and the other two third is that it is another party managing the, the BIM 360. Yes. So, Rudy, okay. show us what we can do. Interesting. Yeah, inter interesting actually. Okay, so um, uh, today, um, there are uh, some custom in uh, integrations uh, between Meridian and, uh, and BIM 360. So BIM 360 has an extensive API that can be used for that. Um, and on the roadmap, we have uh, importing the facility breakdown structure from BIM 360. So the same as I showed for the IFC, but then directly from the, uh, the, BIM, the model in the BIM 360 project. Um, and also creating tasks to obtain missing data so we can import the data from BIM 360, then check it against the checklists. And if things are missing, then uh, we also want to create uh, tasks in the, the BIM 360 project so that the project immediately needs to know that certain data is missing and needs to be uh, delivered. So much more 
um, proactive in uh, signaling data deficiencies. Um, so for that early this year, we created a, a prototype um, for, uh, for this functionality, uh, importing the facility breakdown structure data. We did that, identifying the items, making sure that they're correct ID. Uh, we looked at the uh, creating the BIM 360 task using the, uh, the various uh, APIs that are available for that. Uh, so in all the roadmap we have uh, to uh, to turn this prototype into a uh, a fully functional application that that we can uh, we can offer to our customers. So think about how automated we all are going to be because we will automate. Uh, you will have the automated import of of the facility breakdown structure. This is so nice. Uh, you will have the early visibility of all the data before you do the handover, so you can secure that uh, that all all the data you hand over uh, are um, uh, checked and controlled, and and uh, it is uh, you, you you don't have to to pendle between uh, between uh, the own operator and 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 the guys who who runs the BIM 360 to secure all all. Uh, um, or the data that they are valid, um, they, they, they will be before you push the button. And um, if any data are missing, the contractors will be aware of it because you can tell them very securely that we need this and this and this. So this is the less time consuming uh, automation that, that is the outcome of this. Okay, Rudy. Okay. Um, so in this presentation, we looked at the uh, importing the uh, the data from an, uh, from an IOC file, um, also a Revit model, can be done then. Uh, we talked a bit about the Win360 integration, um, budget preparation, creating schedules, uh, and also supporting work orders using Explorer and the roadmap there to go to uh, a 3D uh, future. We went quite a bit over time, so thank you all for uh, for staying uh, with us. Uh, and maybe for those who have the time, uh, we can have a few minutes for some questions. So please use the chat function yes. to uh, yes. to pose any questions. Or actually, the question is board, Sorry. Yeah, I, I'm looking on, on both right now. Uh, that seems to be the, the, the case. If, if any questions comes up, please don't hesitate to, to send an email um, for us. Uh, for me, I will, I will answer them in, in, uh, in combination with Rudy as good as we can. So with that, I would say thank you so much also for um, attending this webinar and uh, we will uh, we will probably call you uh, in, in in a short time to, to hear what what you in, think individually and um, also we will send out this recording and the presentation as well so thank you again and uh, we will disconnect it now goodbye thank you all goodbye